There you go. Ibises following 120 mils of travel. No. Ibis. I don't know if I come on. Welcome back to our short travel field test series from Quebec, Canada, and welcome to the evil following. While some of our bikes put a premium on low weight and efficiency, what if you're looking for something that's a bit more ready for the rowdiness? That's what evil's 120 millimeter travel and very black following is here for. Now, unlike some of our other test bikes here in Quebec, there ain't no flex pivots or dual lockouts to be seen on this thing. Instead, it's using a single pivot layout with a linkage to compress the rock shocks shock. That's paired with a 130 millimeter travel fork up front to make a package that's certainly heavier, but also more capable than some of these other bikes that we've looked at. Our following will set you back $9,050 American. Let's find out how it compared to the other bikes here on test in Quebec. All right, Matt and Sarah, there are obviously a bunch of different ways to do this short travel down country thing. We've got some light, fast, sporty bikes here meant for cross country racing, but the evil isn't one of them. <laughs> but we still have to talk about how this bike climbs. So Matt, let's start with you and let's start with pedaling performance first. What did you make of this? Okay, well, looking at this bike, first of all, it looks like all the other evils. You would expect it to be heavier and slacker and lower, but that's not quite the case. I jumped on the bike and right away it felt steep. And so I made it in the slacker position with a couple bolt changes. A couple bolt changes or 14 bolt changes? A handful. <laughs> yeah, okay, there's lots of bolts on this thing. Yeah. Once we got it in the lower position, it still felt like relatively steep in the seated position. And that's because that effective seat angle is 77 degrees. Yeah. But the chainstay is quite short still at 430. So it does kind of position you farther over the back wheel mm -hmm. and those rides or handlebars, we had to slam those down after a couple of rides. Yeah, the front end is fairly tall with those high rise handlebars on there, which I just want to mention, those handlebars do feel quite weird as well. How does that work out when you're trying to work your way up some technical climb with the high front end and the short rear end and what's the story? Well, the bike felt quite compact yeah. and more square. So it felt like the front wheel was very close and underneath you as did the rear wheel. It felt like it was right underneath the seat. So it didn't feel like the bike could kind of grapple onto things and kind of work its way up as easily as some of the longer bikes. Mm -hmm. But it did stay off the ground quite well. Like we didn't have any pedal strikes on it, even in the extra low position. So I would say it's still a good climber and it did have plenty of traction as well. Okay. Sarah, efficient or not? Ah, uh, I was thinking about this and I feel like the geometry kind of holds it back on the climbs, but I would say that it is an efficient pedaling platform. Like it does feel like it is supporting you when you're climbing, you know, it's yeah. not bobbing like crazy or anything and you can make your way up things, but just because you can't get your weight kind of far enough over that front wheel, it kind of feels like it, it, the front end wants to lift when you're climbing. Yeah, so I, I rode the Evil around and I rode the RSD around and they both put you in that like, it's very upright, it's mm -hmm. like, you know what it is? It's like, I'm gonna get there when I get there, everybody. <laughs> you can wait for me yeah. or you could leave, whatever. We're in a tra yeah. trail bike position. Yeah, yeah exactly. Does that, would you agree with that? Totally, yeah, it's not an XC race position. Yeah. It's more of a shred country or something like that. Shred country, <laughs> right. Not down country though, we would never say that. <laughs> Uh, Matt, you did mention one thing, an interesting thing about the lockout lever, the pedal assist lever. You were on a ride and you reached down to firm the bike up. What happened? Yeah, it was kind of surprising. The lockout lever position is facing the front of the seat tube. So there's kind of a, a cavity there. And if you try and reach for it on the fly and you hit a bump by accident, you can almost jam your fingers between the shock and the seat tube. Mm -hmm. And I never really noticed that on a road climb where I'd go to flick that lever, but on the trail, kind of gave me a little start. Yet another reason to not use the pedal assist, everybody. <laughs> Fair. Speaking of that, is this a bike that you would firm up? You're, you got a long fire road climb in front of you to get to some great trail. Are you gonna firm that suspension up or, or what? Do you care? On a fire road, yeah, I would say that's fair. I would definitely flick the switch and that's just to kind of preserve the geometry in the steepest position. It 
It's time to talk about descending and when I think about evils, I think about, you know, really stout, solid bikes that are made to go down the hill, that are fun to ride on descents. Is that the story with this thing? I would say that it, it, evil is prioritizing the descent over the climb on this bike is obviously yeah. not a cross country bike. It's, you know, in their copy, they say it's more of a trail bike. And yeah. so they are definitely prioritizing that descent. That being said, with that steeper head tube angle, even in that, you know, extra low position, <laughs> it does feel like you can get over that front end. And it's, it's almost like more deceiving because you expect the bike to be able to handle mm -hmm. going faster and being more composed. But because it's short, it's just like not quite stable enough at speed. And then yeah. you kind of like get over the front end pretty quickly, I found. Yeah. So when I was on the Evil, to me, it felt like a very compact, I'm sitting on top of it and the plus side to that is, Matt, it felt like it could be a playful kind of thing, but it also felt like it might not be super sure-footed when you got going real fast and kind of getting loose on it. Am I right? Am I wrong? No, I would totally agree there. That was, was the first bike that I grabbed, and when we started on one of the more flowy berm trails, uh, the speed picked up quite quickly on the trail and immediately in some of the berms, it felt quite twitchy. I felt a little bit on edge, and the, the bike felt relatively short but it was definitely a bike that could move around quickly and still soaked up the big hits well. So like Sarah talked about, it kind of, the rear suspension kind of outrode the rest of the bike, I would say. Yeah. The other thing that we should mention here is this following frame, this has been around for a few years now. So this is not a new frame, whereas like we're comparing it to the Allied and some other bikes that are, are brand new. And I mean, I might argue have better geometry. Yeah, well yeah. the RSD, I think it just came out this year. So it is yeah. like kind of, I think the next progression of this following, I wouldn't be surprised if they make it a degree or two slacker. Yeah, and so we see that with Evil's other bikes, they, they use a minus one headset cup to adjust some of the geometries. And so if you were looking for this travel bike, but wanted a little bit more composure, settle it down a bit at the higher speeds, you could opt for one of those angle sets and maybe even go up a size. Mm -hmm. Let's move on, talk about suspension. Did you find the end of the travel? This thing had a lot of progression, but it also had really good compliance off the top. Yeah. Uh, the rear shock we did have an issue with. Uh, the first one out of the box did have quite a knock in it. We got a new one sorted and it was money. Yeah, it sounded like a loose piston bolt or something. And I mean, we got a replacement shock sent to us like ASAP because we're testing bikes, but I don't think consumers would benefit from from that advantage. So that's definitely something that we have to mention. We're talking about rear suspension. Let's talk about how this thing compares to the other bikes because that's what we're here to do. The Allied, again, we were pretty impressed with that rear suspension. How does the Evil compare to that? Well, I think you described the Evil as a bike that's very stout and the rear suspension definitely encompasses that. Like the, the frame is stiff, the rear triangle is short, it has a lot of progression. The Allied feels more like a long-legged XC race bike. It's a little bit stiffer off the top, doesn't quite have as much progression, but it kind of caters to the two different bikes. Like, they, they fit very well with their suspension designs. Yeah, and, and to be fair, I mean, that Allied is a brand new bike, and it's also, that sort of positioned as like a racier thing. Um, but what about the RSD mm -hmm. versus the Evil rear suspension? Yeah, I kind of found that the RSD felt more kind of like ready to charge. Like that might be because it was the heaviest bike that we got here. <laughs> um, but it, it just kind of was kind of like more willing to just kind of plow through stuff. Yeah. Um, whereas I found that the uh, Evil was a little bit more kind of playful and mm -hmm. it was like kind of encouraged you to kind of like choose different lines and not just kind of charge right through the middle line. Yeah, okay. We're going to talk about timed testing now. Sarah, you did a ton of time testing. How did the Evil compare to the other bikes? So the Evil was actually tied for fastest on the descent. Not on the climb. Not on the climb. <laughs> on the climb, it was the second slowest. So okay. overall, that gave it kind of the mid-pack along with the Le Pierre. There you go. All right, let's talk about models now. And there are a bunch of different ones. And also, Evil allows you to change a bunch of stuff on there. So we were complaining about the handlebar on this bike, Matt, but? But you can get a different one if you want. You can also get carbon wheels that they make themselves, the Evil loophole. Mm -hmm. Comes with their own grips, their own stem. Yeah, there's a bunch of different options with these builds. Yeah, if it was my money and my choice, I feel like this is the kind of bike that 
I mean, I would just put some stout aluminum wheels on it, some sort of like Dior or XT mechanical drivetrain and, and hit the trails. You know, this is, this is not like a super light, fast bike. It's a sturdy, reliable bike. Agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the $9,000 version that we got with the carbon wheels is maybe a little overkill for how this bike rides. Like you kind of feel it's, it's not gonna be that much kind of lighter or yeah. more efficient. So I yeah. think, yeah, aluminum wheels would be perfect for it. All right, and since we're talking about components, let's talk about the components on our specific test bike. Matt, go ahead. Okay, well, <laughs> the first thing I noticed was that this thing actually had code brakes, code RSCs, had a 200 mil rotor up front. So this is a bike that's maybe geared towards longer alpine descents with, where you're on the brakes, maybe you're riding with a pack. This is not an XC race bike where they're trying to shave every gram. The bike also comes with the evil handlebars, which had a little bit of a funny sweep on them. <laughs> we couldn't quite get them right. Felt like the bend was really early and very upright. They say it's an eight and five, but I'd be surprised if it came Maybe down to that on paper. Maybe like 10 degrees up is what it felt like. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't work. And then the last thing is we mentioned that shock before. Let's mention it again because we're talking about components. Yep. Yeah, out of the box, the Rock Shock Super Deluxe, we had an issue with that one. Just something wasn't put together quite right and it had a knock in the travel. We got it sorted very quickly thanks to a local shop and an evil dealer. So hats off to them. It's time to talk pros and cons, which means it's time to talk to Sarah about pros. That's me. Um, so I'd say that this bike compared to some of the other bikes, it has that really sturdy feeling. Like it doesn't feel yeah. delicate. It feels like solid underneath you, which I think is definitely a pro. And then another thing that we really liked was just that rear suspension works really well. Um, that being said, it can kind of get a little bit overpowered by the geometry. Matt, I'm gonna to turn to you for the cons. And she mentioned the first one there, the Geo sounds kind of dated. Yeah, it was a little outdated, a little bit more upright, but I think it does kind of fall somewhere towards that 120 mil travel. So it's on edge, it might not be for everybody. Yeah, and then the other thing we had to point out was the pinch point on the rear shock lockout lever where if you're riding on the trail and you want to flick the switch, you could jam your fingers in there. I know that doesn't happen to everybody if you're- How maybe, big are your fingers? I have stubby hands. <laughs> I guess so. They're just like the evil, just like- Yeah, uh, <laughs> stout fingers. <so. laughs> yeah. All right, there you go. And that means it's time to talk about who this thing is for. Sarah, this is an interesting short travel bike because it's, it's not a light and fast sporty thing. What is it for? This is like a tough one. Like who is this bike really for? Like I think it's for somebody who isn't, you know, just focused on the uphill, but they're probably going out for like long days, don't know exactly what kind of terrain they're gonna encounter. So they kind of want to be like ready for anything. And I think the evil is, it kind of suits that like middle ground. It's kind of like an all rounder type bike. Yeah, to me, it sounds like a short travel bike for someone who is definitely never gonna race. Absolutely. And also is definitely never gonna weigh their bike <laughs> and might session some spots, you know, is more concerned with looking good on the descents. Yeah, you could definitely slap some turns pretty hard on this thing and like it doesn't feel flexy. We talked about how stout and progressive it was. So it's more of like a short travel play bike. There you go, Evil's following 120 millimeters of travel and definitely a sturdy overall package, especially compared to some of the lighter bikes that we have here. Stay tuned for more reviews from our Quebec downcountry field test. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of them. Oh,